I've had many requests for a more advanced combinations and permutations video. So in this video, I'm going to cover permutations, which is really quite an advanced GRE and GMAT topic. But before I get straight to permutations, I kind of have to give you the background to the combinations formula. Once you understand that background, you'll understand the difference between combinations and permutations. So that formula that I told you in a different video, how to do combinations, I just gave it to you. But now we're going to explore it in a bit more depth. It's that one where we have a total, n, and we're selecting a certain number of people, r, using the formula on the top right of the screen. But where did that come from? Let's look at that in a bit more depth. Imagine this situation. We have eight people, and we're going to randomly line them up in a row. And then the three people on the left will be chosen for promotion and the five people unlucky who are on the right will be rejected. So how do we get the formula you can see in the top right from that situation? Well, the number of ways of randomly rearranging eight people in any queue, if it was just pure random order, eight people go stand in a queue, that would be eight factorial. And the reason it would be eight factorial is that the first position would have eight different possibilities. Anyone could go first. But then for the second position, there are only seven people left that you could choose to go second. Third, there'd be six people, etc. And eight factorial, in case you've forgotten, is eight times seven times six times five times four all the way down to one. And that reflects the queue. You've got eight different possibilities for the first person, seven for the second, six for the third, etc. all the way down. So why isn't the formula for combinations just n factorial, 8 factorial? Where do we get this n minus r factorial and r factorial, etc.? Once we understand that, we'll understand the permutations formula, which is only slightly different, which will come later. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about it. Well, there's two reasons why 8 factorial would be a massive overestimate. First, let's look at those three people who got promoted. Imagine they came in the order A, B, C. But if they'd come in the order BAC, or CBA, or CAB, or any rearrangement of those three people, those same three people would still be promoted. So this 8 factorial is pretending like each of those combinations, ABC, CAB, CBA, is a different one. But we know that's not true, because each of those combinations, CAB first in the queue, ABC first in the queue, still ends up with the same three people, A, B, and C, being chosen for promotion. So how do we reflect that in the formula to account for all that double counting and over counting? Well, we divide by, in this case, three factorial. And that accounts for all the duplications of those three people rearranged while being promoted. And that's our R. The R is the number of people we're selecting, in this case, three, and that's why we divide by r factorial, to get rid of those duplications among the people being selected. But what about the n minus r factorial? Well, same thing goes for the people being rejected. Those five people being rejected, d, e, f, g, h, they could come in a different order, d, f, e, g, h, and they'd still be rejected. So this 8 factorial, even divided by 3 factorial, still contains so many duplicates of the same situation just with the rejectees in a different order. So we have to account for that by dividing by the rejectees factorial. And how many people won't be selected and will be rejected? It will always be the total minus the number of people we're selecting, eight minus three in this case. The bottom two numbers in the formula always add up to the top number in the combinations formula. So we're getting rid of the duplications among the people we're not selecting, and that gives us the correct answer. Now you know the origin of the combinations formula. I think that's really good to know. And now you can see that and hopefully understand that when I tell you the permutations formula, rather than just being another formula, you'd be like, oh, maybe I kind of get that now. So what's the difference with permutations? With permutations, the order of the people that you're selecting, the three in this case for promotion, does matter. So whenever the order, the arrangement of the people you are selecting does matter, 
as in there's a difference between being first in the queue, second in the queue, third in the queue, that's when we don't divide by three factorial in this case. We don't divide by r factorial because we want to count all those different permutations of those people being selected. And that's why we don't divide by r factorial. Or in other words, ABC is not the same as BAC, because in that case, B came first. Whenever you care about the order of the people you're selecting, it's a permutations question. I do have to caveat though, for the vast majority of questions you'll see on the GRE and GMAT, it will be a combination style question. Permutations usually comes up only at the highest level. So this is definitely an advanced video, not if you're just coming new to combinations, although you could still learn a lot from that. Okay, let's look a bit about permutations. You see how the formula changes. We get rid of the R factorial in the denominator because those don't count as duplicates. There is a difference, as I write at the bottom, between ABC and CBA. Well, how would you know when order matters and order doesn't matter? Well, notice in the previous question, three people being chosen on the left of the queue, the order didn't matter. But how could they ask it so the order did matter? Let's look at a quick question. A team of seven people will randomly select three individuals from amongst themselves, with one member becoming the leader, one member becoming the deputy, and one member becoming the finance officer. How many ways are there for the team to do this? In this case, it's kind of clear, isn't it, that we don't just randomly select three people from seven. No, each person has a different job. Person A being the leader, B being the deputy, and C being the finance officer is different to person C being the leader, B being the deputy, and A being the finance officer. So you can tell there's a difference between A, B, C, and CBA. So we use the permutations formula on the top right, not the combinations formula on the top left. To sum up, if the order of the people you're selecting doesn't matter, it's the top left formula, combinations. More rarely, if the order does matter, it's the permutations formula, top right. Let's now apply that permutations formula to this question. Our n is seven, because there are seven people in total. And n take away r, seven take away three, because r is three, we're selecting three people, would be seven take away three is four. So four factorial on the bottom. How would you actually work that out? Well, seven factorial is just seven times six times five times four all the way. And four factorial is the same from four down. And then you can always cancel out massively. Fours cancel out, threes cancel out, twos cancel out, and ones don't matter anyway. So you're just left with seven times six times five in the numerator on the top. Seven times six times five is 210. So there are 210 different ways of doing this. Notice that will be a much bigger answer than if we're just randomly selecting three people from a total of seven. See if I can quickly do that in my head. That would be 35, you might want to check that. I think there'd only be 35 combinations if you applied the top left formula, but no, the order matters here. And so it's 210 different ways of choosing these three different roles. Okay, what about another question to really bed this in? Nine people are randomly arranged in the queue. Only the first three people in the queue are allowed in. How many different groups of people in the queue could be allowed in? Do you want to pause the video and try this question yourself? Okay, if you've tried it or you're just waiting, get ready for this. I was testing you. I was testing you. This is a combinations question. There is no difference between A, B, C and C, B, A. Did you notice I put a question mark at the end at the bottom? In this case, three people at the front of the queue or wherever in the queue being allowed in doesn't make a difference between whether those three people are A, B, C or C, B, A. So it's the combinations formula. Obviously I put the title of permutations just to trick you and that's what I wanted you to take away from this video. It's more often combinations than permutations and I want you to notice the difference. Here it doesn't matter the order of the three people at the front as long as they are the same three people the order they're standing in doesn't matter. They'll still be allowed in. Did you fall for the trap? Well you'll get another opportunity later on. Okay let's quickly do this one using the combinations formula just to finish off. We have a simple case of the total being nine and we're selecting three. 
So n minus r, 9 minus 3 will be 6 factorial. Let's just apply the formula. 9 factorial is, of course, 9 times 8 times 7 all the way down. 6 factorial are the same, 3 factorial. Always cancel out the bigger one. So let's cancel out the 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, leaving 9 times 8 times 7 over 3 times 2 times 1. Pause the video and go slowly if you're not quite sure about this bit. Some people hesitate around here, but you can cancel out loads. And people also hesitate at this moment. After you've cancelled out the bigger factorial in the denominator, in this case the 6 factorial, you can still keep cancelling out. I've seen so many students hesitate at this moment, but you can cancel out even more. Remember, always cancel before calculating. The 9 with the 3 can cancel down to a 3. The 8 with the 2 cancels down to a 4. Because we're multiplying, not adding, we can just cancel out as much as we want. So the end calculation will be quite a lot easier. We'll just have 3 times 4 times 7, which I believe is 84. And so we have 84 different combinations or different groups of people in the queue that could be allowed in. And again, we didn't care what order they were allowed in, those first three people, just who were the first three people to be allowed in. There was no difference between ABC and CBA. Let's see with the next question if you can spot permutations or combinations. A flower competition is being held between the top six orchid displays. First place will receive a gold award, second a silver award, and third a bronze award. How many different finishes are possible in this flower competition? Exciting stuff. Pause the video, have a go. Hopefully most of you got that this was indeed a permutations question. There is a difference between ABC and CBA. Getting first and a gold is different from getting second and a silver. So the order does matter. So we're going to apply the permutations formula, which you need to memorize, n factorial over n minus r factorial. But you don't have to feel guilty about memorizing it because now you know the origins for it. This lends itself to a simple cancellation. The 3, 2, 1 cancels out, and we just have 6 times 5 times 4, which I believe is 120. Don't worry about the 1 at the bottom, doesn't make a difference. So there are 120 different finishes in this flower competition. I hope I've really illustrated the difference between a combination star question and a permutation star question. And I always do this mini lecture whenever students ask me to explain permutations, because I want them to be really clear when you use the permutations formula. Don't overuse it, it doesn't come up that often, only if the order really matters. Anyway, I've had many requests for this style of advanced combinations and permutations video. There is much more to cover, obviously, in this area. So if this video gets lots of responses, likes, comments, etc., I'll do more. Otherwise, I'll do other topics, whatever I want. Have a great day, and thanks for watching all the way to the end.